Right, so thanks for tuning in, guys. It's good to see you again. Um, so uh, this week um, we are we're so going to slightly pick up where we left off. So if you remember, um, we're basing our workshops at the moment on this book, The Red Tree. I know we showed you this last week. You were all all here last week, weren't you? Yeah. So um, we've got The Red Tree, beautiful book. Um, which I'd highly recommend and we're basing our songwriting on this picture which you should be fairly familiar with okay and the caption wonderful things are passing you by okay so very uh, relevant picture for our sort of indoor days at the moment okay and looking out the window and seeing what's going on outside. Okay, so to last last time, just to recap a little bit what we talked about last time. Last time we were talking about putting together a chorus, and the chorus um, of a song, um, really, you know, the most catchy part of the song, the bit that you comes back again and again, um, is normally the same every time. And it's the bit that really, you know, you go away singing. And it's the thing that you really remember about the song. So we worked a bit on that and we did a little, talking a little bit about writing the words and a little, you got some interesting ideas out of that. This week, I'd like to talk a little bit. Um, oh, is my connection still okay? I just said it was... Unstable. Ooh. Um, can you hear what I'm Jenny, saying? It's okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. It's on, for on and off, but um, it hasn't stopped us hearing what you're saying. It's just frozen you visibly. Okay. Sometimes. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I'll I'll stop. Let me know if it gets worse, and I'll try something different. Will do. Okay. Okay. I'll go back on mute now. Um. Thank you. So, um, so this week I want to talk a little bit about writing a verse for a song. So that's the other section of the song um, where we maybe would explore a little bit more of the story or a little bit more development of characters or ideas within your song um, before going back to the chorus each time after a verse for that catchy hook. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about doing the verse, how is I sort of approach doing the words. And today I also want to tackle the subject of chords or accompaniment and what you play underneath your song. Okay. Um, which is, can be a little bit tricky depending on how much you know music or how well you can play an instrument or anything like that. So it just it depends on the person, but we'll, we're going we're gonna to have a good go. And just remember, the most important thing for, for me when writing a song, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to suggest some things and we're going to try some ideas, but that's not the only way to do it. And it's not the right way to do it. You can, you can explore lots of different ways of doing these things. So, um, okay, so the verse. So what, we are, I'm, what I'm aiming for today is for us to start writing some words for the verse, as I mentioned. And what I want you to do when you start thinking about writing your verse for your song, if you've still got your chorus, that's brilliant, but um, you can add to it now with your verses. And um, what we want to do is we want to start trying to explore um, a story, a bit more of a story of what's going on in this scene. Okay. Now I'm not going to give you all the answers here um, because I want you to sort of find some of these answers yourself but i'll give you some of my thoughts okay so who who is this girl um is is she in this where is she actually is she in a house is she in a tower 
Is she in a castle or a palace? You know, we, we don't actually know. You can see like a brick wall, but we don't actually know where this is. Um, so you could have a think about that. That might, that might be a nice idea to explore. You could also think, well, is she on her own? Or is there anybody else with her? You know, who, who else is in this castle or house or wherever she is? Factory? It could be a factory or something. We just... So these are just kind of story ideas that if you think about put them in your song, but you can start really... Um, oh, you all paused then. Have you still got me? Um, you, you're in and out slightly. Ah! But don't worry. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just going to try this, Amanda. Sorry, okay. guys. Internet problems these days. I know. Uh, many people using them. You may lose me for a second. Okay. Are you, have, you still, have you still got me? Yeah, still there. Is it any better? Um, I think we have to test it out. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know. Okay. Let me know. Um, Okay, so I was just saying about exploring the story a little bit, um, where she is, what type of building is this that she's in, who is she, who is she with. Um, as I say, I'm not giving you the answers, but I just want you to start thinking a little bit about the story so that you could start to develop some of these ideas in your verses. Okay, so, you know, if you've got any ideas, jot them down. You know, if you, if you like the idea that this is a factory or you like the idea that this is a palace, or anything, you know, just get those words written down on paper so that you can start to think about a story to do with that. Okay, so that's the sort of first step I would do when I'm trying to develop the verse because we've got, we've got to put some content in there. And by that, I mean, in general, for me, a verse has more words in it. Not, not all the time, but in general. So I'm trying to develop the story a little bit and move the song along when I'm singing my words in the verse. Um, okay, I'm going to just I think what I might do now. Um, I'm going to sing what I've written uh, today. <laughs> I wrote this today. And um, what I've done is I've taken my chorus from last week and I've completely changed it. <laughs> and um, I've kept a couple of words. And I've changed the style, I've changed everything, because that's that's part of the process, things change. And I've come up with some words um, for my verses as well. My song has gone a little bit more folk song style. And we'll talk about style in a minute, but I'll, I'll, I'll play this to you and see what you think. Um, just to maybe give you some ideas of what you can do with a verse. Okay. <laughs> has it been watching and waiting for a change missing things you've never seen and everything feels so strange locked inside your own regret wasted chances wasted time hoping that you don't forget the world is so sublime Lord, Flies, flying through the sky, slowly passing you by. Look out the window, see the moon and pretty clouds. Flying through the sky, slowly passing you by. The outside light is shining through, a promise of a sudden change. A sense of renewal in you No longer feels so strange Unlock the past and your regret Take a chance and waste no time Learn to forgive and to forget Because 
the world is so sublime Open up the window See the birds and butterflies Flying through the sky Don't let them pass you by Open up the window See the moon and pretty clouds Flying through the sky Okay, hopefully you could hear that okay. Is that alright? You could hear that alright. Now, I want to play you all of that to demonstrate a next little songwriting idea that I, I love to put in my songs. And it's to do with um, development throughout the song. Okay. So, in my first verse, I said uh, I was talking about being stuck indoors and a little bit to do with the situation we're in at the moment. I said, how many days has it been watching and waiting for a change? Missing the things you've never seen and everything feels so strange. Locked inside your own regret, which was a reference to um, this padlock, which has regret written on it. Um, wasted chances and wasted time. Hoping that you don't forget that the world is so sublime, okay? That was my first verse, and it's a little bit sad. I've got a bit of a story going on there that things aren't so great, and you know, there's a lot of you know sad feelings and regretful feelings and longing it going on in that verse, and that's my overall sentiment that I'm trying to get over in that verse. But then what I've done in my second verse as I've echoed some of those same ideas, but with a more uplifting feel. So I've used a lot of the same words at the end of my lines, but I've changed the meaning. So I said, the outside light is shining through, a promise of a sudden change. So I've used, instead of waiting for a change, now there's a promise of a sudden change. A sense of renewal in you, and no longer feels so strange because before everything felt so strange. So I've changed it. Instead of before where I said, locked inside your own regret, now I'm saying, unlock the past and your regret. Um, before I said, wasted chances and wasted time. And now I'm saying, take a chance and waste no time. Before I said, hoping that you don't forget that the world is so sublime. And now I'm saying, Learn to forgive and to forget because the world is so sublime or because the world is too sublime. So that's one little writing device that uh, pleases me if I can squeeze it in a song. Because what I'm doing is um, there's a journey and that's what I really want you to try and get across in your verses. You know, I'm going to run out of time before I even get onto things like rhyming structures, you know, where I've, I've li rhymed line one with line three and I've rhymed line two with line four in every four lines of my song in the verses so this these two lines would rhyme and these two lines would rhyme but all those things don't really matter as much as the story to me and I like my song to have a story and a journey and I think that's really important for theatre as well if you're writing songs for theatre you know, theatre is story driven. And if you can also help that story develop and all the characters develop or the character's story move on throughout the song. So there's a personal journey or there's some discovery or enlightenment that can happen throughout the song. Then it's satisfying by the time we get to the end of the song. It's okay to have um, some trouble or struggle or adversity but it's nice to overcome it with something a little bit more lifting and actually I broke a little rule in my song I used a bit of artistic license and I changed my chorus as well so in the first I don't know if you know did you notice thumbs up if you noticed mmm okay first chorus I said look out the window see the birds and butterflies flying through the sky, slowly passing you by, look out the window, blah de blah de blah, uh, flying through the sky, slowly passing you by. In the second chorus, I said, open up the window. 
and see those things and they're flying through the sky but don't let them pass you by open up the window they're flying through the sky but don't let them pass you by so I, as a call to arms it's sort of saying um, you know let's not miss out on all these wonderful things that are passing us by let's embrace them okay so that's my idea in my song so you don't have to do that and your song could have a totally different story to mine and that's that's great um but some development throughout is really nice if you can squeeze that in there okay i wanted to talk about chords today and i've left myself hardly any time um so we're gonna move on now okay i'm gonna break this down into um five levels okay so level one uh, if you've sort of got words and a tune going. Level one is I want you to try and sing a bass line. Okay? And it can only be, it can just be like four notes. It doesn't matter what four notes. But level one would be able to sing a bass line, even if you just sing it in your head. Uh, what is a bass line? It's the really low bit that sits underneath all the chords and all the music. And it anchors everything on top. So, um, my bass line for my verse would be... This type of thing, okay? So my tune over top and the bass line on the So my bass line, if I was singing it, would be. You don't have to use the word dumb. You can use any word you like. Um, okay, so that would be singing the bass line if you can't play an instrument or you can't um, write out music or anything. But that would sort of be one step to try and think of a bass line that could go under your tune. The next step would be to write that out if you know how to write music or you know what notes you are singing or you can figure that out if you've got a piano or something to figure out what those notes are. It's to write those out. Even if you just write the letters... Or if you write it out in music notation, brilliant. Um, another step, so there's two two ways of sort of writing, figuring that out. Another step would be to play it on an instrument. So that's like I did there. It can just be as simple as one note bass line like this. And you could play this on uh, piano, flute, violin, whatever it is you like to play. Okay. And then if you can... Um, so you're so you're still thinking about your words and your tune over the top of that bass line. That's the that's the key, trying to fit it all together. If you know about chords, then you can build your chords on top of that. So you've got this bass line. Now you're just going to use that bass line as your anchor note for each chord. So my first bass note was a C, for example. So I'm going to put a C chord on top. My next bass note was a D. So I'm going to put a D chord on top etc etc okay and that you can just keep that nice and simple for now and if you know more about chords you can choose whether you want a happy sounding chord major chord or whether you want a minor chord a sad sounding chord okay so there's kind of like five or five or so steps to that it's being able to hear or sing a bass line in your head and being able to write it out or write down what 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 that is so you don't forget it basically uh, being able to play it on an instrument and being able to build chords on top of that and being able to choose whether they are um, major or minor. Some songs only have two chords in them and I mean the same two chords for the whole verse and the whole chorus. So it doesn't have to be complicated um, but you just have to settle on something that you like and that works with your tune. Now, just the last little food for thought. How you play those chords makes a huge difference to your song. Um, it can really affect how you sing it. So I played mine in a very folky way. But what if I wanted it to be a rock song? I could play the same thing. Watching and waiting for a change. 
missing the things you've never seen a rock song would normally say birds and butterflies but anyway um but you know it, oh it could just be really upbeat happy how many days has it been watching and waiting for a change missing things you've never seen da -de -da -de -da -de -de -de. okay so all of a sudden uh, I haven't even changed the chords. I didn't even use different chords there. And that bass line would have still worked. But I've changed the feel by how I'm playing those chords. Am I going to play them upbeat or down tempo? I'm going to make it into a ballad if I want something soft and sad or something like that. Okay. And that's where we start to get into the style and genre of the song. So, um... And so you can make it jazzy, poppy, rock, folky, whatever you like. And um, and but you can play around with it with the chords that you've come up with. Okay, so I, I, my time is always flying away on these things, and I'm gonna recap now. And I hope this has been interesting for you guys. But um, okay, so the the chorus generally the same throughout a song, and it's. It's it sort of like summarizes the whole story of your song, okay? And it's gotta be catchy, really catchy. But that verse is where you can start to build in some development of this story, okay? Get, get more words in there. Um, ex try and do as much rhyming as you can to make it interesting, okay? And if you can do my idea of echoing something that happened in one verse, but changing it slightly so that there's progression within the story and the characters or whatever then that's brilliant to me that's that's really fantastic because it's um it's familiar but it's moved on um and chords wise if you're struggling to put chords to things just start with a simple bass line you can just sing it or play it on any instrument you've got and then you can think about building chords up on that afterwards if you can and if not, you can just play a bass line underneath your song. Get somebody to play the bass line. You sing it over the top, you know, something like that. And you'll have a song before you know it, okay? So I hope that um, gives you some ideas of things that I like to put into songs. There's plenty of other ideas out there. Um, so happy exploring and hope you come up with something, something cool. And I look forward to hearing some of your ideas. Thank you very much. Oh, well, Jamie, I'm just going to pin me. Jamie, thank you very much. That was really, really lovely. Pleasure. I hope you're going to be able to remember that song because it might have to might have to have something like that in this B play. So keep hold of that. OK, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep hold of today's work. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. So uh, that was a really lovely session, Jamie. And um, just before we go, um, I'm hoping that you might come up with something even if it's um, the words to a song uh, that we can have a look at because everything we're doing as part of these sessions uh, we want to be able to um, use to help us create our next show which is going to be a version of the red tree by sean tan so if you've come up with any great lyrics or any great tunes that rosie and jamie can um, can have a listen to or have a read of would you be able to send them to calm and creative at red theater.com so that's an email address calm and creative at red theater.com and um we're just hoping to be able to get together all the things that we've got already we've got lots and lots of pictures that have been sent in we've already got lots of different musical tracks so if you've got anything to add to that do send it to us by email and let us know what you think and what, what you created. Um, so, Jamie, I'm really sorry that's the last session we're going to see of you, but we will see Rosie later on. Yeah. And um, we hope that everybody's enjoyed it. So just before we go, I hope you all um, stay well and stay safe.